Hello, happy Friday. It doesn't feel like a Friday. I was driving here today. I was running a little late. I was on with my mom. She said, doesn't the show start in five minutes? I said, yes, it does. Ran on in here. Here I am. Hello, mom. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Toxic masculinity. Toxic. So toxic. We're going to talk about that today. Is it toxic? No, we know that. We know it's a media narrative, but we're going to talk about a great conversation that happened about it on Fresh and Fit. Uh, what I think about that, promiscuity versus actual dating. It seems to me that some modern women, young women, are confused about the difference. So we're going to lay out the difference for them, do some eye-opening stuff. Girls apparently are getting very nervous when their guys are listening to Andrew Tate and Fresh and Fit content. They are freaking out. We have a call-in to another show where the girl is just borderline breakdown about it and needs some advice. So she gets some bad advice from those girls, but I'm going to give her some good advice today. Uh, The feminization of modern men. I'm not talking physically. What's going on on the inside? The why and why it's bad. Uh, How the weak-minded need to uh, stop reacting to content. Stop with the, oh, misinformation. Oh, guard me. Nonsense. And also this concept about young, inexperienced women. If you meet a 19-year-old guy's out there and she seems really great, is it safe to marry her when she's really young, or does she need to sow her oats? I'm going to tell some truth on that one. Those are your topics for today. I'm keeping it spicy, as always. Natalia is in the house today. Hello, hello. (laughs) She's going to be managing the chat, so you're going to want to get into that chat. Yes. Uh, Super Chats will get read on this show. Questions, comments. If you ask a crazy question that's really good, you know I'm going to go for that one. So just letting you know. You're going to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. We're going to dig into all of that. And we're going to begin with the Whatever Podcast. You guys know the Whatever Podcast. You know I love that one. It's that dude. I'm trying to get him on, actually. I want to talk about how he came to want to do a show with all these crazy women. And how does he keep his sanity? My Lord. Mm-hmm. Let's start with that first clip. Um, this is about a girl who says she played the field. Let's go, Natalia, whenever you're ready. Okay. Mm-hmm. The crazy is coming. Just be ready. Relationship. <laughs> couple months. I'm I'm not a relationship girl. Um, what does that mean? Here's why I threw Oh my goodness. Way all my blood Oh, Natalia's pressure. got the ads in there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it didn't, it the didn't get in the there. prep in there. there we no go. worries. No worries. Here we go. Let's go back a little. And let's go. The qu- yeah, go ahead. The girl. Um, what does that mean? Yeah, I guess Closer to the mic. Um in college I kind of just, you know, Played the field per se. <laughs> um, yeah, but I don't like. I haven't wanted to settle. Oh, I haven't wanted to settle for anyone. Um, I think college guys are not exactly ready to settle themselves. So, yeah. Did you Did you enjoy playing the field? I did, but I think I'm retired. Retired. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, a senior now, so I'm ready. You uh-huh. know, for life. What, so no I, I'm thing. curious to hear when you say play the field, like what specifically are you talking about when you say play the field? Um, you know, test it out <laughs> different guys, you know, like slept with different guys, I guess. Um, yeah. So I feel like you guys are kind of ashamed of this and yeah. you know, you shouldn't be. I don't think you should. I don't either. It's embarrassing to admit, but at the end of the day, I'm not embarrassed because I feel like I've learned a lot and like it has shown me what I want. At the okay, end. we can pause. Exactly. Yeah. How old- so you notice right away that she is embarrassed. She's embarrassed. Why? Because it's embarrassing to say, I played the field. You're essentially saying that you slept around, girlfriend. And that's, you know, it's not becoming for a woman to say that. You know, it's frowned upon. You know, the guys at the table are going to be like, mm. you know it. Or you wouldn't be embarrassed. Then, of course, she comes back and she's like, I know I shouldn't be embarrassed when she gets the reinforcement from another girl. But she was feeling bad about it. So ask yourself why. If you're behaving in a way that actually makes you uncomfortable enough to have that reaction and be like, "Mm, you know, then what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Ask yourself the reasons why. I think it's really interesting um, to observe in this next part how she talks about her reasoning for and justification for doing it. So let's go to that 1030, back to back. Fascinating. How we're supposed to figure out what we really want and what we really like if we don't experiment, especially in college, like this is the time to 
test out different things, different people. Um, yeah. But I, I feel like there's Okay, other we can ways. stop it there. So she's, this is the justification. Oh, I'm already losing my cool. <laughs> this is the justification for playing the field. She's trying to now make it sound like playing the field is a way to figure out what you really want. No, that is different. Playing the field, she's talking about being promiscuous. She's talking about getting in and out of people's beds. She's talking about hookup culture. She even says initially that she's talking about instances where she doesn't take relationships seriously. What are you getting to know from that process? That is completely distinct from somebody who dates in college, who goes out on dates with different people, gets to know different personality types, goes out to dinner, has the long walk, has the great conversation. I'm not saying never sleeps with anyone but is selective about that process and is really getting to know people. So this is the problem with hookup culture, particularly with women today, is that they, they now have accepted and swallowed that this is just part of the process. You're just, you're, it's self-discovery. You're just, you're living life. You're experiencing different things to figure out what, what you really want. And I would ask them, what do you figure out from one night stands? What do you figure out in hookup culture? What do you get out of it? Really, what are you trying to discover? Don't use that excuse. If you are really just playing the field, then just say, yeah, I'm just out there. I'm hooking up with a bunch of guys and I'm just doing me and I don't, I'm not even thinking about dating. I'm not really even, don't make it like, oh, I'm doing this to try to figure out what I really want from a guy. What are you going to learn? How somebody sleeps with you who doesn't really care about you? Because that's what it is, right? If it's hookup culture, they're not even invested in you. What are you learning? What you like in bed? Is that what really, say the truth. Because what I find is there is a conflation today. Women saying this stuff, and it sounds good, right? Like discover yourself, figure out what you want, but they're doing so in a hookup culture format. That is completely distinct and completely separate from actually dating. And by the way, side note, that girl uh, in that clip, by the way, who I just cut off, comes in and says, I don't know if you need to sleep with everybody to kind of discern. Because what, honestly, you really want to get to know somebody? Why do you have to sleep with them all? There are people that you're going to go out on dates with, ladies. You're going to go on the date. You're going to say you go to a movie. You're going to go to dinner. You're going to walk around. And you're going to be like, mm-mm, this one's not for me. You don't need to go home with him, OK? You've already figured it out. So I just feel like this hyper promiscuity is just being glorified and it's almost like they'll look for any excuse like this whole self discovery stuff. What are you learning about yourself by spending time with people who don't care about you in the context of a hookup culture and what are you learning about them? The answer is nothing. So stop saying this is self discovery and figuring out what I really want when you're really just trying to justify your involvement in hookup culture and make it sound better than it is. Done. Okay. This is a really interesting, um, there's, a, there's a podcast I found. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called We're All Insane, which I, by the way, like the name because I think that's true to some extent. I think we've all got a little crazy going on. Natalia's like, maybe yeah. just you, this Jed. Is, this is, this is a little bit. I think we all got <laughs> She's a like, some there. more than others, Jed, if you know what I'm saying. But yeah, I accept it. I accept my crazy Italian. You know, I wear it like a badge of honor. So this is a section about Fresh and Fit, about Andrew Tate, and it's absolutely fascinating. It starts with two girls. Um, I think they're influencers. I think they each have a separate channel. And they're getting this voice memo that another girl has left. She's very worried, people. She's very worried about what her boyfriend is listening to. So let's listen to her. I'm going to let this roll through in her own words. We're at 2104. Mm -hmm. And just take a look. Slash girls after dark. Zuck, duck, duck com slash girls, girls after, after dark. dark girls okay so for some background i'm 25 my partner's 29 we've been together several years i love him to pieces uh okay so after watching your fresh and fit podcast i asked my partner if he knows about it or if he's watched it he said he hadn't heard of it um but as we were talking he was watching an andrew tate video i've noticed since then like how often he watches them and those type of guy talk podcasts but never fresh and fit um to be honest when i'm like home and in the other room like those kind of guy talk podcasts just like turn me off so fast mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm pretty sure he watches most of them when i'm not home because he can tell that i get a little annoyed mm -hmm. um so i'm curious to your opinions on andrew tate specifically and if the ideas he promotes are any different from fresh and fit 
Um, I just worry because my partner does get kind of easily influenced by guys like that, and he's on social media a lot. So when I brought it up, he got pretty annoyed. Um, <laughs> he said as long as he treats me well, I have nothing to worry about, which to be fair, he does. Um, I just kind of worry, I don't know, isn't there something about like a certain kind of guy talk that like speaks to someone's character, you know? And like he's binging these videos. Am I just overthinking it? Um, have you girls ever been in similar like situations or had similar worries? Um, yeah, am I being controlling? Like, you know, how do I stop being a Karen about guy talk? Like, I'm curious for divorce opinion okay. because we share a lot of the same I love idea. that. How do I stop being a Karen? You're being mm -hmm. a Karen, honey. You're being a Karen. And you're being a little controlling too. Let him listen to what he wants to listen to. Okay. All right, so this is interesting to me. Let's be clear first and foremost about what she's worried about. She is worried that her guy is going to listen to this red pill commentary. She specifically mentions Fresh and Fit and Andrew Tate and that he's going to be influenced by it. In other words, that he's gonna listen and he's gonna sit back and he's gonna look at his relationship with her and maybe he's gonna be like, hmm, I don't know. I hadn't thought about that before. Or, you know what, I really don't like that she does that. Maybe I should say something. Or maybe I need to be doing that's what she's worried about she's worried about some truth hitting him while he's listening to that that's going to change a dynamic in their relationship that she really likes she seems to be comfortable with where things are so <laughs> she feels like he's malleable right she feels like he's malleable and this is what I'll say we exist in a world where we are constantly consuming stuff. If it's not a podcast, it's a television show. We read a magazine. We do not exist in a relationship in a bubble. The person that we are dating, married to, whatever, goes out, has their own conversations with their friends, listens to podcasts. My husband listens to podcasting all day long, all different types of content. If you are worried that the person that you are with is going to transform into a completely different person by virtue of listening to a wide variety of content, you have a bigger problem in your relationship, which is that you are afraid that that's not really who he is, or you're afraid that he's too malleable, or you're afraid that he doesn't know himself. There's something else going on. You cannot, you cannot try to have a relationship with a guy, with a female, and put them in a bubble. You know it. You know you're gonna get into an argument at one point and that girl's gonna call one of her friends and you know they're gonna talk it out. You can't worry every time they consume something from the world that they're gonna turn into somebody different. It'll drive you crazy and she shouldn't be worried about that. If she is worried about that, she should have a conversation with him about that. There's something deeper going on here. Now the response by the women to Fresh and Fit in particular is fascinating to me. So we're gonna listen to that response and we're gonna dig into why this response is so unbelievably problematic. Let's go to 2536. Thing like the Fresh and Fit podcast where you listen and I just, I do feel like yeah. it's just like total low blows. The Fresh and Fit podcast is just a no-go for me. If I ever saw my boyfriend watching that, um, I, that would just be like a total red flag because they're, I've realized that they are like the bottom of the barrel shit version of Andrew Tate. Like they want to be like him, but they are just so like hateful towards women that they, I guess, are just even worse. Yeah. And I, I think that you're not being a Karen. You're not being controlling. I think it's normal if you're watching your man who, you know, you have this like good relationship with, like listen to people that are kind of like saying controversial things that could potentially change the way he views certain things or change the way that he might treat you in the future or react in certain situations within your relationship, yeah, that's going to be a turnoff. It's going to be a turnoff mm -hmm. that your man is listening to someone like this. Because okay. So again, they are so worried that their guys will go and listen to content. They label it controversial. Honey, everything's controversial. Politics is controversial. You listen to a liberal. You listen to a conservative. This stuff is, Manosphere stuff is controversial. Go listen to some feminist content. You want to hear controversial. Everything in life now is controversial because everyone is kind of in this click mode, right? Where they're, they're talking, but they're feeling like, especially in the podcast space, this is a space where finally I can say what I really think. Everything's controversial because everyone's always waiting to be offended all the time too. Fresh and Fit is not hateful. Okay, she doesn't have to agree with all of Myron's comments. I don't agree with all of Myron's comments. Myron is not hateful. He is not hateful. That is the wrong word. And it looks to me like she hasn't spent a lot of time watching the content because nothing he's saying is hateful. Is it controversial? Sure, because it's going to make some people mad. Of course. Is it hateful? No, that's a big distinction. So I ask again, why would you be afraid for your guys to listen to the content? Because think about it this way. 
let's say they know their guys and they're going to come back and say, no, no, my guys would never support what Myron's saying. My guys would hate that content. Okay, then you have no problem. Then your guys will listen to the content and they'll be like, oh, this guy's totally wrong. Oh, I totally disagree with that. Oh, yeah, that doesn't work for me. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want that. And then they shut it off. Nothing's changed. Maybe it made them think a little bit more. Maybe it made them have to defend their position a little bit more, but they haven't been changed by it. They disagree. So you wouldn't care. What you care about is that they might agree or they might find themselves thinking about things in a little bit of a different way. And maybe they come back to you and maybe they're like, hmm, I don't know about this part of our relationship, blah, blah. Maybe they want to talk to you about it or that's what you're worried about. You are worried about the power and influence that these people, these leaders in the space, whether it's Rolla Tomasi, whether it's Fresh and Fit, whether it's Andrew Tate, you are worried about their very strong voices potentially influencing your guy in a way that you don't like. That's what you're worried about, so just be clear about it. You're not, they're not hateful, and they're not bad. They're just making you uncomfortable because you don't like their commentary, and you don't want someone who you kind of have a little bit programmed, maybe, <laughs> to be exposed to other ideas. Let's be real, and we're gonna, we're gonna hear from these guys. The reason I felt comfortable saying programmed is because I already heard from the guys. You have an audience, but you're gonna love that portion when we get to that. So I also think, just, just again, this, this word controversial, again, triggers me a little bit because it reminds me of all of the people that say, you know, they wanna label. Like, look at all labels that happen in that. Hateful, controversial. So what should he be listening to? What should your man be listening to? He can't, he's not supposed to listen to anything that you deem hateful. So what is that? Everything you disagree with? He's not supposed to be listening to stuff you deem controversial, which is basically everything. He can't, can, he, can he listen to any political commentary, any social commentary, any commentary about gender activism? What's not controversial? So this is, again, this is a deep insecurity speaks from a place like this. Deep insecurity speaks from a place of, I'm worried about what my person is gonna be exposed to because it might change this dynamic. That's where that comes from, insecurity and concern. And maybe even sensing that it could shift the power dynamic in the relationship. These girls are in control. They are in control and you will see it when they bring the guys out. They are in control of their relationships. They are running those relationships. I have zero doubt about it. So there is absolutely a thought in their heads that if their guys or someone else's guy goes and listens to a Fresh and Fit or listens to an Andrew Tate, they might want to have a little bit more say about what goes down in those relationships. No question. No question. Okay. So I think it's important now that we heard from the girls a little bit about fresh, how they feel about the Fresh and Fits and how they feel about the Andrew Tates, I was like, well, who are they? Who are they? What has their past looked like? What are they willing to share? And by the way, this is not a judgmental game. This is just you're sharing, you're telling me, and I'm going to comment on what you're sharing. Okay, so let's get to know the girls. Before we bring the guys out, that's truly, that is the icing. That is the coup de grace, as they say. But let's talk to the girls. So we're at 944. Um, this is a quick one. And one of them is talking the brunette is talking about her past, and then the blonde girl chimes in. I think her name, the blonde, is Claudia. I think it's Devorah and Claudia. Claudia. I may have that right. Let's listen to the exchange. Okay. Is that it's kind of just like their penis has just somehow ended up there, and then after the fact, I yeah, was then just you're like, like, oh, fuck, they are not a trustworthy person. So thank God, I never like, I never got anything like that. Yeah. Um, I think I trusted was, you enough to know that you wouldn't do that to me yeah but also we never like it was very like occasional or like maybe only happened a few times that i know me and dev ever just like slept with people we didn't really truly know like i feel like a lot of the times some of the people i've been with are very questionable i mean i'm thinking i there was definitely people i met and slept with at I the same think, time would i would okay really okay no disrespect but that is the context so how do penises just end up there, by the way, I ask? How does that happen? Are you just seated and it's just, it's got a mind of its own and it just, uh, all of a sudden? I, I don't think so. I've Listen, I've been out of the dating game for a little bit of time, definitely still in the sex game because I'm married and I have a great sex life. But regardless, last I checked, a penis just doesn't find itself inside of a human. 
that's just me. Maybe my biology is off. You never know in 2022. I could be outdated in some way. But she says that comment, and I know it was cut off a little bit on the screen because we're trying to get the whole video in. She says that comment, by the way, with her boyfriend sitting next to her. So those two girls in the middle, each guy on the side is a boyfriend to each of them. She says that comment, oh, I don't know, like the penises just wound up up there with the guy that she's with now sitting there. And if you'll notice, he goes like this because he's like wants, probably wants to die in that moment. That tell told you everything you need to know about the power dynamic in that relationship, by the way. The fact that the two girls were talking on camera like that about their sex life. And the other one's like, oh, yeah, there are definitely like people I like met and slept with the same day. <laughs> not funny, honey. Nasty. Nasty. It's not funny. It's, and let me tell you who it's not funny to on the inside. On the inside, it's not funny to those two guys. They're embarrassed. They're a little humiliated. They are now kind of little statuesque representations of what men need to do in the modern feminist age. They need to sit there and smile when their girlfriend says things like this. In fact, he comes back, one of the guys, and says, well, I think I trusted you enough. Like, he's trying to, like, make her look better because if she looks bad, he looks bad. Like, it's like, dude, what are you doing? Like, she's talking like that you're sitting right there it's nasty so he's like oh let me try to make her look better she's not having it she's like no no actually a lot of it was questionable I mean it's just it is the epitome of what's wrong with everything that we're talking about right it's disrespectful by the way women this is just a note it's very disrespectful you have a past everybody everybody has a past but when you talk about fickle sex that you had before you were with your guy publicly with your guy sitting there it's not a good feeling for the guy I don't care if he smiles because feminism told him he has to because if he says anything about it then he'll be labeled a misogynist or anti-woman or oh he's trying to control her and her feelings and what she's saying so he's got to sit there like a dummy right or he'll or he'll potentially be canceled by everyone at large but that guy's festering inside come on come on so that is the context that is the context for the women who were having that response about Andrew Tate Pryor and having that response that fresh and fit was hateful so does it occur to you now that you've seen that that maybe those women and women like them, would be concerned that their men listening to Fresh and Fit would upset the power dynamic that currently exists in their relationship, which is clearly that they are in control. Women are running the show. No question. No question. I'm telling you this as a female. It's very easy to see. They're like little puppets. They can can talk. Don't get me wrong, but their talking points are in line. They've all been approved. They've all been approved. All right. So then the guys come in, and... This is an opportunity for the guys to talk. I don't know how much we'll be able to see of them in the frame we have, but we'll do the best we can. But you can hear them, okay? Let's go to 3610. And the guys now, one by one, are going to share their thoughts on Andrew Tate. Now, keep in mind, these are the guys that were sitting there while the women just spoke the way they did. You need context. This is why I laid it out this way, okay? Let's hear what the first guy has to say about Andrew. 3610. The way he speaks motivates a lot of men, like, because he's very, like, deliberate, and he's like a, like a drill sergeant type talk, you know? Like, you're going to listen to it and be like, I'm motivated. But the issue is, is that he's, what I said to Claudia yesterday, I was like, he's poisoning these weak men, men. He's poisoning weak men's minds out there. Because a lot of men are not, you know, an alpha male, if you want to use that term, whatever you want to say. Okay, wait, Most pause for not. a second. Are you, honey? Are you? Come now. I know this guy's a bodybuilder, by the way. I went and looked at his page. But alpha comes from the inside. Alpha is not this. I mean, great. Oh, Jed's got guns. Yay. Mm-hmm. Alpha is not that. Alpha is in here. The alpha guy comes from the inside out. Is he an alpha? I would ask him, are you an alpha guy? You think so? All right. Hmm. Interesting. Alpha guy would have just sat there and listened to the do girls talking like that about their old set. Oh, his penis is just, you know, they just slipped in. I don't know about that, audience. What do you think? What do you think? I have my doubts. Also, right from the top, how is Andrew Tate poisoning men? I want to know where the poison is. Where is it? Is it when he says, get off your ass? 
Is it when he says, get into the gym and work out? Is it when he says for your, you shouldn't rely on prescription medication to cure depression? Is it when he says you are responsible for owning your own life and your own choices? What part is it when he says you should be financially stable and you should be able to take care of yourself and your family? Is it when he says that it's a a guy's job to protect his woman, even if he has to die to protect her? Where is, I want to know where the poison is. I want to know. So it's very obvious this guy just watched a bunch of short TikTok shorts. And I'm telling you that because that's what I did initially. I owned that part of my journey. We're going to get back to that at the end of the show because I need to remind you of that. So where's the poison? Okay, let's keep going. 98% of men are are not like that, like go-getter mindset. They're like weak, they're weak-minded. And Mm -hmm. this is like penetrating that in a really negative way because yes, he might live this lifestyle. He might think these things and say these outlandish things. One, he's probably just saying it for fucking views too. Um, when it, when, when a weak minded man listens to this, they're thinking that's the fucking answer. That's mm-hmm. why I am a, I'm a loser or I am weak minded. I need to start thinking like fuck women that then I'll, then I'll, then I'll have validation of myself. But yet that's, I, I, that's like the issue with Andrew Tate is that he's putting this image and, and, and like mindset into people that should not have Not that anyone should have that mindset, but they should definitely not be watching this because they're just getting, it's like they're getting brainwashed in a direction that they they can't even handle. Don't you love this? Don't you love, do I have any uh, in the audience, in the chat, do I have any Andrew Tate fans? I'm just curious because you've just been infantilized by this guy. He has infantilized you the way modern feminists do to women all the time. You apparently are dumb and you're not strong enough you're basically a bunch of weak ass bitches you're sitting at home you're watching Andrew Tate and you're just absorbing you can't possibly process what he's saying because you're so weak that you're going to misinterpret it and you can't be trusted to form your own opinion how infantilizing to everyone by the way just so this guy knows the weak ass bitches aren't listening to Andrew Tate That's not who's listening to Andrew Tate, honey. The weak ass bitches are watching pornography all day long. They're playing video games all day long. They are uh, doing drugs. They're overweight. They're sitting on the couch with a bag of Cheetos. They're becoming obese. They are, you know, not financially stable, not working toward anything. Those are the weak minded people. They're not going to be drawn to a guy who's very rough on guys very he's like get off your ass no excuses weak people are not drawn to that they want someone who's going to help them continue to be weak they don't want someone who's going to invite them to be strong you have to have an inner strength for andrew tate to appeal to you yeah i said it you have to have an inner strength you have to want your life to look better weak people are not drawn to that they want easy answers they want someone else to do it for them and they don't want someone challenging them on stuff they know they're doing wrong. So I find this hilarious. Obviously, do you see now why I said this guy watched a few Andrew Tate shorts and he was like, oh yeah, I got it. He's like, I got it. Push his sleeves up. He's like, I, I know what I'm going to say about this. Um, also, interestingly enough, this line, getting brainwashed in a direction that they can't even handle. I, this happens in politics all the time. You have liberals that talk to people like this all the time. They infantilize you. They say like, oh, you don't really understand all the bad stuff that Donald Trump wants to do. Just trust us. We're better. You just can't understand how deeply corrupt he is. Don't worry. We've got it for you. Just vote Biden. It's okay. This happens all the time. This is from the playbook. This is the leftist playbook. Now, I don't know this guy's politics. And the thing is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the point is, this guy is a young guy. I think he's in his 20s. I'm pretty sure he's in his 20s. I don't know how early in his 20s he is. He's a young guy. So he's echoing this this feminist, modernist garbage, even though he doesn't realize it, right? He's echoing it. He, he has been programmed without even, he doesn't even know it. He doesn't even know it. But let an older generation guy watch this, I'm telling you, or someone who's awake to the system or someone who doesn't regurgitate talking points is going to be like, dude, splash some water on your face. What are you saying? 
What did you even do research a little bit? Right? And everybody needs a reality check every now and then. So now the other guy weighs in. You had him, the one boyfriend. Now the boyfriend whose girlfriend said the penises just found themselves there. Now he's going to weigh in on Andrew Tate. And this, this may be even better. So let's go to 3811. I think I think people like Andrew Tate, basically what they do is they prey on, they find like a, a, a group of people and they prey on their insecurities and their problems. So basically, if you're a guy who's struggling to get girls, the way that you're going to justify it is by seeing Andrew Tate on your for, for You page and him saying that, talking shit about women and saying they're all these bad things. Now, social media, the way social media works is it plays off of extremes. You never see like, okay. like your mind. Okay. I mean, it's just, how is he, how is Andrew Tate preying on people's insecurities and problems? He is directly calling out those insecurities and problems. He is talking to people and saying, you're lazy. You're lazy. Get off your ass. Get off your ass. He is inviting you to do better. He is telling you that what you're doing isn't working is bad for you and you need to do better as a man. That's not preying on people's insecurities and problems. That's challenging them to overcome those insecurities and problems and get their shit together. What is being missed here? Well, I'll tell you. What's being missed is that they don't know anything about Andrew Tate. They just know what they were told and they know what those two girls in the middle are comfortable with them saying about it. And they're not straying because the power dynamic in their relationship is such that they don't stray on certain topics and you know it. Natalia. Um, we actually have a chat that yes. I would like to get your opinion from Pro Debates. He says, question, uh, Jed, uh, does Jed think that someone should share around the alpha males, as in one alpha male should be with uh, the woman? So the way I feel about that is every relationship needs to figure out what works. Like I can't sit here and tell somebody else what to do in their relationship. And as long as it's consensual, and as long as it's no one's getting hurt and there's no and people are on board together, do what you want. So I don't have a recipe for what works and what doesn't work. I personally, personally, I'm a fan of monogamy. That's my relationship. That's how I structure my life. I don't have resentment toward people that choose a different option. I do think that when women are in a relationship with a guy, if that guy is shared with other women, I do believe that most times that woman will begin to feel unsafe. Even if she signs in the dotted line and says, this is the contract, this is agreed upon, I believe that she will begin to feel unsafe and unhappy because there's women really value intimacy in a different way than men. And it's very hard for women to detach emotion from sex unless they've been programmed, brainwashed, whatnot. But that is naturally our instinct is to connect sex with emotion. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. And I think that when the guy leaves, even if the guy leaves and isn't in love with another woman, I think it's really hard for women to process that. So I think it ultimately causes women to be guarded against their man. And it will create an unhealthy dynamic in the relationship a lot of times. It'll be just too challenging for even a woman who signs up for that to swallow. Now, there are exceptions, for sure. I think there are exceptions to every single rule. My recipe from is monogamy because I actually believe that when you have two people in a relationship where sex is just between them, you get a level of trust and intimacy that's unparalleled. And particularly when you bring children into the picture, that creates a very stable dynamic. And I'm always looking at it from the perspective of family um, and community and you know building out the best society at large. However, People want different things, right? People, There are women who maybe have no problem with that dynamic. So I'm not going to shit on what makes them happy. Let them do what they want. But if you're asking if I think it works most of the time or if it's a recipe for success most of the time, I would say no. I say the same, by the way, about two-way open relationships for very much the same reason. Um, one is that the women, again, will have a very hard time with that as it continues, as it persists. And also, I don't think a lot of guys are going to be able to think about their girl sleeping with somebody else. Like, I don't think guys want to think about that happening 10 years ago, let alone tomorrow, yesterday. Like, I just, it's, it's a very complicated structure. And I think you have to be 
wired very specifically to be able to swallow that as a man or a woman. There are people, but generally I, I don't think it's a recipe for success. And I think that's, yeah, just how it plays out. Got that one good? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to go back to this conversation that we're having here. Craziness. All right, so the guy weighs in on Andrew Tate, <clears throat> preying on insecurities, nonsense, blah, blah, blah. Now, he continues. He continues, and he talks about how he believes that people take five attributes about themselves, and they create talking points. He's talking specifically about Tate, but largely about others. Listen to this. I'm. I, this is... Let's go. We're at 4118. And like, like we've like discussed that people in the YouTube space will talk about this kind of stuff, but like politicians do this, where they basically take five attributes about themselves and make sure they always stay on those five attributes. So for Andrew Tate, it's probably like, like toxic masculinity. Like this guy probably maps out like what he, no, does, he does to make sure he stays on no, he brand does. with Literally. what his message is because he doesn't want to trip up because if he trips up, then that audience is going to be like, oh, well, that's not why I liked him yeah. in the first the place. The problem with that and staying on brand with those characteristics is that all these other dudes think that that's 100% Andrew. Yeah. And then they see a success, so they're like, I need to do what Andrew does to get the success. But Andrew doesn't even fucking dude, do this, that. Th this dude, not saying it's the case, but this dude's probably in bed like, crying himself to sleep at night because <laughs> this isn't actually the way that he he like all out thinks that okay you can't think so ba based on what doll based on what do you say that so you have decided now you don't know andrew tate you clearly haven't watched any of his long form commentary it's very obvious you have decided that a he's talking point driven that he creates a little list of talking points and he gets up and he's like, I gotta hit this, this, and this. You can't possibly wrap your head around the idea that this is just a guy who feels the way that he feels, right? And he says controversial stuff that's so not always popular and he doesn't give, he doesn't care. He's saying what he's gotta say. Why does that rub you so hard? No, no, it's gotta be contrived. It's gotta be contrived. You've decided that about him and you've also decided that he's actually quite weak in your view. You've decided that he is in bed crying himself to sleep at night based on what it's based on the need you have to make him weak in order to make yourself feel strong that's why you're doing that because his strength bothers you because the fact that he doesn't give a shit about what anybody thinks about what he said bothers you because you do care you do care and i could see it when your girlfriend said something and you were like oh god you do care you do care what other people that's why you are reciting modern feminist talking points cloaked as male commentary right now. You do care and you, it bothers you that he doesn't care. So you have to now make him small. Well, he's really sad on the inside. He's really, this, this, this isn't really who he is. He's just doing it for clicks. The fact that he could actually just be saying what he thinks is very intimidating to a lot of men because they don't have the gonads to do it. They don't have the gonads to do it. They're not willing to be canceled they're not willing to anger modern media. They're not willing to anger modern feminism. And it bothers them deeply that this guy doesn't care. He doesn't care. If he wanted to craft his commentary to be palatable to everyone, right? Don't you think he would craft it that way? Then he's not doing that. He knows he's going to piss off 50% of people every time he opens his mouth. He doesn't care because he says, I'm saying what needs to be said. I believe this. This is my opinion. Feel free to challenge me, but I believe I'm making the world a better place with my commentary, and that's why I'm saying it. That's where he's coming from. You don't have to agree, but you can't decide that somebody's inauthentic just because you don't like what they say. What do you know about that? Do you know what's going on in his head? No. So why not just challenge what he's saying on the merits? You disagree? Fine. Have a debate about it. Pull up some Andrew Tate commentary and go toe for toe and say how you feel about it. No. No. That would take strength of character. That's not what this is. You being deciding that he's a broken man because you need him to be broken. You need him to be broken because it makes you feel good and strong and tough. That's weak. Just saying. This is the best part, the coup de gras. This is the coup de gras. And you got, listen, guys who know this content know it's coming. I remember Rolo talking to me about this the first time we sat down. All right, go to 4315, Natalia. This is the best. The nugget. The golden nugget. Like, if he went through some form of trauma with a woman, right? Mm -hmm. And it affected him so negatively that he needs some kind of outlet to relate to. 
that he can then solve that problem, even if it's in an artificial way. Yeah. So rather than addressing the root of the insecurity of the problem, <laughs> he's trying to mask it with somebody else who's just like, hey man, I know you have these issues. So I now, so- okay, now this guy went one step further, one step further and he's like, this Andrew Tate suffered trauma. He suffered trauma and as a result, He's trying to mask it with his commentary. Can you imagine this madness? Now, this is from what I call the weak-minded playbook. Write it down. The weak-minded playbook, because you're going to see it again and again and again. You're going to see it in social commentary. You're going to see it in the manosphere. You're going to see it in political commentary. People who are weak-minded will persistently and consistently try to psychoanalyze you so that they can decide there's something wrong with you because they are intimidated by what you're saying and they cannot counter it adequately in debate, so they have to minimize you in some way. There's something wrong with you. You're traumatized. You're crazy. You're acting out. It can't just be that you have an opinion that you stand by because they are afraid. They are afraid to go against that opinion, to challenge that opinion because they don't think that they have the talking points to do it. They're like, I don't know. How, well, if really, if you had an issue with Andrew Tate and you were confident about it, wouldn't you just say, listen, he's saying this, this, and this. Here's why he's wrong. No, no, he's traumatized. He's, he's got talking points. He's, he cries himself to sleep at night like a little baby. Projection, honey. Projection is all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. I have a question, too. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Natalia about this as well mm. after I do my little rant about it. Do these guys seem feminized to you, audience? Do they seem feminized? I'm not talking about appearance, although I do believe, no disrespect, that the guy on the right, he does look a little bit like if you brought a Ken doll to life. I'm just saying. He does have that look to him. And I think, by the way, these are all very good looking people, so I'm not trying to be nasty about it. I think they're all very good looking people. Very. But there is, is there something feminized about these guys, not in appearance, in, from inside out? Do you, if, I, if you had... Let me ask this way. If you had, you know that voice technology that you can put, oftentimes in a crime series, they'll put that technology over a person's voice so that all you hear is like, right? You can't tell if it's a man, it's a woman, because people are, they do it for safety reasons, the FBI, the CIA, whatever. If you put that technology across all four, would you think it was all four women talking? I would. I would think it was four women having a conversation, no joke, about society and Andrew Tate and fresh and fit. That's exactly what I would walk away from. And I'm just wondering, where have all the cowboys gone? Paula Cole said it sarcastically in a song, but I say it for real. Where have all the cowboys gone? Not one guy was like, well, listen, let the guy say what he wants to say. Like, here's where I think he's wrong. Here's where I think he's right. I don't know about trauma or who cares? Like that's, he's, no. Those two guys have been programmed. They sound like millennial, guarded, safe space. Let me, let me say my mind within the confines of what's accepted. I don't want to make society or my girlfriend who found the penises up there just somehow mad. You know it. You know it. And I'm not ragging, listen, I'm not ragging on people individually to be, you know, bad or mean. All I'm saying is this, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and recognize that you are a robot now for a cause, right? This doesn't sound authentic to me. It just doesn't read as authentic. If you legitimately had a problem with Tate, you would have come with your own reasons why. This nonsense about, oh, he's this, he's these pro, I mean, ridiculous, where have all the cowboys gone? So, Natalia, I want to ask you. Yes. Did you have that react? Now, maybe it's just me, Natalia. You're a millennial. Are you a millennial? Um, what? You're, you're 20. You're in your 20s. 20s yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did, did it strike you as... as um, sl- honestly, yes. Um, but not only like the physical, not that. Um, I think also seeing how the women were reacting while they were speaking. Like you could say, like you could see that they were looking at them like what are you going to say in a mm-hmm. sense like if you know like if you Don't agree say with him, thing. yeah like if you agree with him like this is not yes. like I'm going to have an argument with you after so i think even just that dynamic you can see kind of the relationship of like the who's in charge in a way mm-hmm. um so yeah i i would say that too yeah honestly. and you notice in the clip too yeah. like you'll see 
the girl will laugh like he like yeah that's my man saying that like yeah 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 but you notice they're like they're waiting they're like they know though those yeah. guys are gonna tell the line because in the beginning the blonde girl i think it's claudia says straight up oh if they listen to fresh and fit they're out right so he that guy's like even if he did want to watch some fresh and fit he's like watching myron on mute in the toilet like he's like got his headphones in he's like you know he's afraid there's a fear that's been struck in men to just guys you want to watch fresh and fit let me tell you straight up okay you're in a relationship you want to watch some fresh and fit whether you agree you disagree you go watch it you go watch it and if you have the type of girlfriend that's going to be like if you watch any of that you're out you just say okay well you know what let me uh just give me an hour to pack my stuff up because you know that's it you don't get bossed around like that okay you are a free thinking person you are your own individual to have someone tell you you can't consume a podcast a television show whatever because they're afraid that it's going to corrupt you no Mm -mm. no I don't have time for big government control in politics and I don't have time for little government control, the little tyrants in the houses either. No, it doesn't work like that. Somebody says to you, you can't do that. Say, are you, are you really trying to tell me I can't watch podcast, doll? That's not gonna fly. You gotta stand up. You gotta stand up for yourself. I see more and more men just so afraid. What are you afraid of? Guys, what are you afraid of in standing up for yourself? Are you afraid that your girlfriend's gonna leave? Are you afraid that, what, what is it that you can't just say, listen, I know you don't want me to listen to this podcast, but I'm going to listen to it because I'm interested and I may not agree with all of it, but I'm a free thinking adult human and I'm going to listen to it. You afraid she's what, going to pack your stuff? Try it. First of all, if she does leave, you got rid of somebody you don't need because that is a giant control freak headache that you don't want. And secondly, you might be surprised. She might not be used to the pushback, but she might be like, hmm, wait a minute, okay, so he's a lot tougher than I thought. I better step off, or maybe he'll leave. It's a game a lot of times. It's a power game. You need to be yourself. Don't allow that nonsense to stifle you. No. Okay. Where are we here? All right. This is an interesting conversation I want to have about toxic masculinity. And this is the, I think we're going to probably do this for the, remainder here mm. I'm gonna leave that end part off because sometimes mm -hmm. I map the show and you know I get a little too excited I'm not gonna lie I get a little too excited fresh and fit has a woman come on and <laughs> she starts talking it's very it's quite a monologue you'll see and the topic is toxic masculinity which she believes is actually a thing okay and Myron has some comments about it but I think this is very significant listen to, i know you're gonna you're gonna hear her exchange and you're gonna you're gonna want to be like jed why why did you make me suffer why don't you like me trust me it's all everything i do is with good reason it's good for you i'm telling you so let's play it 153 35 <laughs> and i feel like uh one of the Merch. things i feel really bad about men is like the huge pressure of toxic masculinity put on you guys because you 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 grow up and it's like you're not allowed to cry you yeah. gotta be strong you gotta be tough you gotta do this you gotta mm -hmm. do that and that's why i feel like a lot of men don't know how to properly communicate or express themselves because society just pushes you down pushes you down and it's like if you had a little bit more like love and tenderness in you you would be able to communicate mm -hmm. your feelings better and you'd be able to love properly and, and it just sucks that society really does put that on you mm -hmm. guys and I feel like me like with my guy friends with a guy that I'm dating I really do try to have like those sit down talks with them you know because a lot of men and women a lot of people aren't over five dollar your way I rule oh my gosh <laughs> got it added middle. there <sighs> oh, we'll get back to it problems they they just want to shove it down they don't want to face their fears they're they're not accepting what happens to them <laughs> play the music <laughs> It's serious. It's no. serious. In, in general, all of us, all of us, it, you know, you need to accept what happened. You don't forget it. You need to accept it Perfect. and learn from it and move on from it. So you don't affect another person the way that you've been affected. I feel like everybody likes to be on that hamster wheel and that's fucked up. Well, I think so, especially for men. I feel so bad for guys. Real quick, like, I, I just want to say one thing. I, I think toxic masculinity doesn't exist. I think it's a, it's a lie propagated by the left to try to go ahead and insult masculinity. And then number two. Okay, wait, I we got to pause. Wait, I have to pause. I have to I have to just first of all I love I love when people in the manosphere say the left because I, I feel like yeah you know you get it you know 
You know, you may not talk politics every day, but you know what's going on. That is 100% accurate. To- that's why I say toxic masculinity has been fabricated. He's right by the left. And when he's talking about the left, by the way, well, let me not say what he's talking about. The, let me say what I'm talking about. The left, by the way, is very large. It's not just politicians. It's modern feminism. It's big tech. It's all the big, the big government. It's all of that. Because I told you that the system needs men to be weak because big government can't grow without weak men. You can't have things in place like lockdowns and restrictions and whatever, by the way, stage two of all that is going to be because it's coming. Mark my words. I said it here. You can't do that stuff without weak men because when you try to do stuff like that, it's the guys, the strong men, the alpha guys who know how to defend and protect themselves, who aren't afraid to be guys. Those are going to be the people in society that stand up and say, oh, uh, big government, I don't think so. I don't think so. You've gone too far. So they need those guys to be figuratively castrated yesterday. And one of the ways they do that is they make those men feel bad about everything that makes them strong and male, and they make them apologize for it and grovel at the feet of the modern age Gloria Steinem's of the world because they need them weak. So that is on the money, Myron. Okay, second part is fascinating to me. Let's play the rest of Myron's commentary on this. With women ever. I, gen- I genuinely At don't all. think that women are not equipped to, and, and <laughs> this might be a controversial take, <laughs> but I genuinely- We all should be open with well, each other. Well, That's how you create a better community. Be community. I, I don't think so, and I'll tell you why. That. Women are not so. equipped to handle masculine problems. Men and women live different existences. There's a burden performance. But that's performance. why, like men, men have those but, problems and it's like but, literally- But here's the thing, you're not equipped to deal with them. If, if I sit there and I, I don't need to, to deal with it, but I hope that you could talk to me so that no, you could deal with it better. Well, no, who's no, who's no, 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 we're going to talk to another guy about yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like guys don't even talk to each other. So what I'm saying is, so what I, say is I, I, I tell guys all the time, women are not equipped to handle your problems because men and women experience but different realities. But do you guys like actually sit down and talk to each other about it? Can I finish? Can I finish? What I'm saying is that women are not equipped to handle male problems. So therefore, if you do have problems, you need to go and confide with men that share your experiences that you can trust and you respect. You don't tell women your problems because here's the problem. If you tell a girl that you like your problems, what you're doing is you're showing vulnerability. That vulnerability is going to be, how do I say this? It's going to make you, it's going to make her lose attraction for you because women value security. If I'm supposed to be the leader, the rock in the relationship, right? The dominant guy. Then I sit there and I cry and I'm not sure where I'm going. Oh my God, I don't know what's going on. Oh. <laughs> and I'm crying to you. Well, you're going to start to doubt my leadership capabilities and a byproduct that is you're going to lose attraction for me. Now, again, going back to what I was saying, you might say, not really. I don't agree with that. The truth is female arousal. No, you guys aren't, don't know what you're aroused by. So if I know some girls might be able to tolerate, some girls can't. Why would I take that risk and open okay. up Pandora's box and open so up? So this is actually a fascinating exchange, a exchange. I would love to actually have this conversation with him. I think it's multi-tiered. It's multi-layered. It's fascinating. It's something that I've talked about in my house with my own husband, um, just because I think it's an it's a it's an incredible discussion. A couple of a couple of things. I do think there is a little bit of gray here. A lot of what he's saying is true. Okay, a lot of what he's saying is true. I do think that there is a distinction, and I don't know if Myron's made this distinction on his show. Maybe he has. It's, po- it's very possible that I, because I haven't seen every episode, obviously. But there is a distinction between what you do as a man, I think, that's ideal when you're dating someone, when you just meet someone, and what you, what you do when you're married to someone and you already have that life partner. And here's why it's a little bit different. When you get married to someone, and say you're married for 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, I don't know how long, you are going to go through things that are really serious. It's not just gonna be financial stresses. People are gonna die. I mean, you're gonna have family members that die, that die and pass away. You're gonna have, there are gonna be car accidents. There are gonna be losses of pets. There's gonna be, it, big stuff is gonna happen. People are gonna lose careers. I mean, it, it, big, big, it's like this, right? Because life can be that way. Life can be incredibly challenging. I think there is a time and place for a man to show vulnerability. But I think that male vulnerability looks differently from female vulnerability. And what's happening now in society is that women want men to show feelings the way women show feelings or the way we recognize feelings, right? So we're tugging at guys all the time like aren't you upset is 
Are you not showing your emotion because you were told by society not to show your emotion? We're going through something. Don't you want to cry about it? Don't you need to cry about it? And the reality is that oftentimes I think the answer is no. No. I need to cry about it, right? I'm a female. I show emotion differently. I handle problems differently. So something could happen in my house, right? And I can have a breakdown about it. And it's happened. Believe me. I don't apologize for my emotional side. I am a woman and I, I wear it proudly. So I will have a breakdown and I'll look at my husband and he's he's not having the breakdown. Number one, he's not having it because he's just not having it. That's not where his head goes. Now, his version of a breakdown as a man is, I need to problem solve this. Okay, so this is happening. Uh, and yeah, it's a little stressful and we're going to figure out how to get from point A to point D. So now I need to focus on, he becomes a problem solver in those moments. I need something different. And by the way, this is not better or worse. I'm not hating on women. I'm not hating on men. This is showing that men and women are different. When something happens, I need to talk about my feelings. I need to talk about how I feel about what's happening. It's important. It helps me to get a handle on what's happening. It relieves my anxiety about what's happening. And it makes me feel better. Even though even though it might not actually help us get to a solution, it's something that I need. I think a lot of women feel that way. And I think that's a lot of reason why they pick up the phone and they call their girlfriends sometimes. Because that's an important part of how we deal with trauma or deal with calamity or deal with struggle is that we need to talk about the emotional side of it. We assume then that guys also need to talk about the emotional side of it or society has done something wrong, has silenced them, when in reality, a lot of times that's not what they need. They're not emotionally crumbling inside. They are strategizing. It's a different head. That's not to say they're not stressed. That's not to say they're not upset. That's not to say they're not having feelings, but what they don't need in that moment is to discuss the feelings. And in my house, it happens all the time. My husband will say, okay, you feel this way. I understand. Okay, what are we doing about it? His head doesn't, he doesn't need to talk to me about the feelings. That's not where his head's at. So I think it's just oftentimes a basic acknowledgement that men and women are different. Now, what Myron's talking about also is that is the vulnerability. I think what he's saying is largely accurate, which is that I don't want, I didn't choose my husband because when shit hits the fan, he cries and he shatters and he needs to talk about his emotional upheaval at that time and he becomes fragile and he wants to sit and just dis- like discuss all of the emotional ups and downs of the experience. I didn't choose him for that reason. I chose him because he felt unshakable to me. He felt like I could ra- try to rattle him. He wasn't getting rattled. And that was a beautiful thing because I knew if I wasn't rattling him, not that I would try actively, but you know women, you know how we are sometimes. Sometimes we can rattle. We can rattle someone. It's a beautiful thing when a guy doesn't get rattled. Maybe it drives us nuts for a second, but in the long run, we realize, oh, if he's not getting rattled by me, he's not going to get rattled by the world either. That is a sturdy man. It's very desirable. It is very desirable. That's not to say you can't be a human being. I don't think women want someone who has no feeling, no emotion, a robot. That is not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you don't want a guy that's going to crumble. So I think there are moments where when guys are in that strategizing head and that problem solving head and they want to talk about what's bugging them, maybe something financial is going on, right? And they're like, what do I make the best decision here? They don't need you to feel their angst about that. They want to be able to go talk to their guy friend about it, figure out the best solution, and be able to come back to you and say, I got this. And if there's a moment where they feel like they don't quite have it yet, they feel that it's their job to get to the point where they feel like they do have it and bring that to you. That's a very honorable, noble thing to do. But if you're asking me if I think if they're suffering inside as a result, listen, I'm sure maybe Again, there's exceptions to every rule. There are exceptions to every rule. Maybe there's guys out there that feel that they grew up in a house where they had a a parent that made it so that they could never express emotion as a child. Maybe that had a psychological impact on them. It's possible, of course. But do I think largely guys are walking around needing to emote 
the way women do? No, I don't. I think that is a female imposed thing that we put on men. And we say, come on, I know. It's like this. It's like, I know it's in there. It has to be. It must be suppressed. Instead of just saying, that's not how he's going through this. He's not going through this the way I'm going through this because he's not me. He's a guy. I'm a woman and we're different. And the reason that I have these conversations about you know, gender activism and you can't say man and woman is because if you can't acknowledge these differences, you will be facing obstructions societally constantly in your relationships, in your relationships with parents. I have conversations with my mom and dad. Do you think they look anything alike? No. No, they're very, very different because I'm dealing with a man, I'm dealing with a woman. I'm a woman, right? You cannot refute or ignore the differences. And it's not about, people hear what Myron said, I'm sure some instinct is to say, he's talking down to women. He's saying women can't understand men's problems. No, he's saying you don't process stimuli the way I do. You need different things in those moments than I do. It's different right? In the same way that sometimes I need to pick up a phone and talk to my female friend. My best friend is a female and sometimes it's just about a vent, right? Ladies in the chat, you know it. It's just about a vent. It's just about, and I know if I have that vent with my husband, he is going to problem solve my way out of it. And I don't want to do that just yet. I want my vent, right? I want my small breakdown and then we can problem solve. So it's okay, It's okay to have these different dynamics and it's okay to acknowledge that the sexes are different. It's not talking down to anyone, it's just different. He could have in the same breath probably said that in some respects, men aren't equipped to handle what's going on with women. Like you need to talk to another girl about some things. You're not gonna get the feedback you want in that moment sometimes from a man. It's okay. Everyone is so prickly about everything. So it's an important conversation. Natalia, I know you're trying to get my attention. Natalia's very good about the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually had a really good question yes. from um, Pamper Me Proper. She said, why do you think women feel like they can handle men's problem? Uh, women live a very different life socially, so why all of a sudden the push to handle the business now? Well, I think that... I think women oftentimes come from a good place in the sense that they want to be there for their guy you know they want to they see they see that particularly if you're in a situation where you are with a guy who's dealing with most of the finances in the house who works the full-time job and who is balancing a lot and you you want to be there for them so you want to be like hey can i help with this or can i help with that but i think you have to just understand that their their minds just work differently So you may think you're being helpful in a moment, but that's actually not helpful to him. And it's not that it's not that you're not trying. And it's oftentimes not even that he doesn't appreciate it, but that's not what he needs in that moment. He may need the same way you need the vent. He needs the strategizing. He needs that. Okay, I'm at point A. I need to be at D. I don't have time for B and C. What does this map look like? I don't want to have that conversation. That stresses me out. I don't know. I need my like. But what if we never get to D? What if we get there and it's too late? Am I gonna be really, I don't know. I just, I need to put a face mask on, honey, and I need to chill for a second. I'm not demeaning women, but this is part of who we are. Own it, embrace it. Men don't hate us for this. We wind up hating ourselves for it, right? I want my face mask, I want to take a breath, and I want my husband to figure out how we're going to get to point A to D, he can strategize about it, and then I'm going to come back into the conversation, and I'm going to be present. And I think the reason it happens, all of this, all of these problems happening, like you say, why do women feel like, because we're, we're not accepting the basic premise that there are limitations, because we're different. There are limit- I'm not going to be able to, to do everything that another guy could do in that situation. That's why guys need to have guy friends. Women need to have female friends. It's a balance. It just is. That's not, that doesn't mean you're not a perfect, like no one's perfect, but like, you know, you're still being a, a good wife. They don't expect you to fix these things that you're putting on yourself. They don't have that expectation of you. So any other ones that we have coming in? 
Um, we Today have, was fun. Yeah, guys, by the way, we have one that's getting asked. Um, uh, when do you think we'll have Rolo back? We've got some Rolo. <laughs> Rolo. People, yeah, people love Rolo. the Tomasi. Mm-hmm. People love the Tomasi. Rolo is coming back. I've spoken to him a few times. The next time Rolo comes, though, he's going to be in person. I would say I can comfortably say within the next several weeks. Rolo's going to be back and he wants to talk about modern feminism and he wants to talk about feminism at large, which I think will be an interesting discussion. Um, And maybe, you know, always shoot me a message, shoot me, you know, in the chat if you want to hear him talk about something specific, but I want Mm -hmm. it to be in person. We're working on some cool stuff, by the way, um, that's going to involve potentially a live audience. Uh -uh. So you never know, but Rolo will be back. We've, I'm in communication with him quite often. Um, I'm going to close the show out in a couple of minutes, I just wanted to to say one thing that was that it was funny. It came up. I did um, Michael Francesi's show the other day. Fantastic guy was great. We had a long conversation. It was interesting. One of the things he brought up was from a very long time ago when I was commenting on Andrew Tate when I first got into this space. I had taken issue with Tate on the issue of self defense and women, and I just want to remind everyone. When I first came into this space, and I've had this conversation a few times, I, I was, the reason I point out these people that don't watch the long form content is because that's what I did. That's what I did. I sat and I watched short after short after short after short, and I read and I read and I short after short. I watched what, what came to me. And I watched, I did watch a couple of long form interviews, truthfully. Um, and I just started commenting on like, oh, this short, this is, what is he talking about? This is not, you know, oh, look at this. Who is this guy? Come on. You know, like just given commentary, never called for him to be censored. I don't call for anybody to be censored um, beyond like criminal activity, of course, things like that. But, you know, I I, I do believe it's, it's interesting when it's brought up to me and people, and I talk about a little bit of the transition that I've had. And I say, this is an interesting space, you know, the YouTube space. It's This is a place where you're actually like discovering a lot of how you feel about issues with people. Like I'm on here right now and I'm discovering this whole thing that I talked about toxic masculinity. I was like, oh, that's an interesting angle. It's actually happening while I'm talking to you. But I just wanted to put out there that you you can go back even and you'll hear me. You'll hear me talking about Tate and saying, oh, what is this guy even talking about? In fact, when we do get him on, and we will, I'm going to ask him about that self-defense thing because that is an issue where I disagree with. But with what he said in that context. And I'm curious. I said to Mike Francesi, I said, I wonder what he said before and after, though. Because now I'm like, hmm, what was the long form video on that? So you're going to have to, if you're going to be comfortable with me, you're going to have to be comfortable with someone who's really honest with you. And who, when I, when I make a mistake, or when I say, you know what, I should have watched more long form content on this guy, I'm going to tell you. So would I go back and say some of that a little bit differently? I would. I would. I still disagree with him about the self-defense point as represented in that short, but I have a feeling that's not what he was saying. Now that I know a lot more about him, I think he was probably saying, don't get an inflated ego, women, and act like you can, you know, pull a Terminator when you really can't. If you can run out of there, get out of there is probably what he was saying. But you need to understand that the ebbs and flow of this show is that when I feel like... Mm, I should have done that better. I'm going to tell you. And I said that to Michael. I said, you know, I think, you know, upon looking back, this is what he actually probably meant. Knowing what, and I'm going to ask him. And maybe I'm wrong about that too. And then I'll have to come back and say, you know, I thought he meant that. But no, actually he meant what he said the first time. So I just want you to know that's what this is. This is not about Jed said something, end of story. We are going to evolve together as a host, as an audience. And when I, when I say something that I can look back and say, you know what, that, I think I got that a little bit wrong. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to pull the clips down. I'm not going to, because I've had a couple people say, oh, you know, Jen, I don't think you, you didn't like Andrew Tate at first. I said, no, no, no. Never didn't like, I don't know him. I don't know the guy. I don't know, he could be the nicest guy in the world. He could be a jerk. I don't know what he's like as a human. I don't know him at all. I never said that. I said, but I did take issue with this content, and I wonder if I just didn't do my job properly that day, and I didn't watch that long-form content. That's on me. So you're always going to hear me take responsibility for those things. So if you hear a change or an evolution, it's because I am somebody who believes in accountability and I am somebody who believes in own your shit, own your good, own your bad, own your pluses, own your mistakes. And I'm always going to be that person, whether it's about Andrew Tate or not, whether it's about politics. And there have been instances too where I've looked back. Perfect example I'll share before I leave is when I 
did a lot of the coverage on Trump and I said, you know, I was having conversations about a stolen election and I said, I, I don't see I don't see evidence of a stolen election. I still don't see evidence in voting machines or any of that. I don't see any of that. But I, I looked back and I said, you know, I should have caveated that though. And I should have said, but you know what? What's going on in media is is heavily influencing the outcome of this election. What's going on with big tech is heavily influencing. And here's why it's a problem. So it's not a stolen election in the name of voting machines, but hmm, was there a lot of trickery going on with all the bigs? That would have been a great opportunity for me to have that conversation. So we're human, right? And this is a process. But I do, I do often address it because I see in the comments sometimes they'll be like, wow, you've really come around. And it's more like, I'm the same person. I just watched more content. I just watched more content. Um, so there you go. I loved this conversation today. I love hanging out with you guys. I hope you love hanging out with me too. Don't say no. That's bad. And I'm going to be back here on Monday with a solo show. We are mapping out some incredible incredible guests you're going to be very excited for i've been communicating with them all morning i want you to hit that subscribe button for me right now i want you to hit that like button you got to subscribe you got to hit like and please leave your thoughts in the comments you love what i'm saying you hate what i'm saying i don't care all i care is that you're thinking you're a free thinking person and that you are getting your voice heard whatever that may be so have a wonderful day have a great weekend go have some italian food because we all know it's the best just saying and i will see you here on monday Bye.